Welcome to day two of the Cricket Wireless Swag Football Virtual Media Days. Today's production is brought to you by Cricket Wireless. Smile your own cricket. The United States Air Force, join us and take your dreams to new heights, encouraging you to aim higher, further, and faster. USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the SWAC. Academy Sports and Outdoors, get the gear in here to have fun out there. The official sporting goods retailer of the SWAC and the SWAC, building champions for life. Delighted again to be with you once more. Jay Walker, the Hall of Famer, Tiffany Green here with you as well. And certainly we'll dive into many more teams. Now we're going in alphabetical order. So we heard from four out of the five teams out of the SWAC East. It's going to be the inverse today. and will be really West heavy. All right. So Jay, we talked about some of the headlines and, and some of the things that are going on and taking place in this 100th anniversary of uh, the SWAC season. Now we're in spring, okay? It's unorthodox for sure. Drastic shift, but still the football, the quality, uh, nonetheless, we expect to see at a top-notch level, especially when it comes to championship game time. Absolutely. One thing about the SWAC, the SWAC is still the SWAC. You know, they're the crowd for going to have that championship game, which they've been having for quite a long time. So that game is going to be played on May the 1st this year. So it'll be interesting. They're going to play for it. A lot of things in-house that they got to take care of. So you got to win your side of the bracket to make it a championship game. But let's not forget, when you talk about the SWAC, this is the conference of the classic. They classic like nobody else does out there. So they're still going to have those classic matchups, but they'll be a little bit different on the schedule this year. First thing they're going to do is kick it off on February 27th with the big one, which is going to be Grambling versus Prairie View A&M. That State Fair Tech Classic that they do in Dallas all the time, well, it's going to kick off opening play. So if you're a fan of SWAC football, particularly those teams, Jay, you know how big that game is. That game is still on the schedule. Then the following week, you're going to have what's normally known as the Labor Day Classic between Texas Southern and once again, Prairie View A&M. They're going to battle that following week. But I'm going to tell you, the date that I have circled on my schedule, April 17th. You know what you got on April 17th? You've got... Uh, uh, some fantastic matchup, but I feel like Bayou? You got the Bayou, but with a twist. It's going to be played in Shreveport, Louisiana. So for the first time, Grambling may have a little natural home field advantage because Shreveport is Grambling territory. But that same weekend, you've also got you got the Magic, the Magic City, Magic City Classic, you know, hey. there, Alabama State in Alabama a and And if that's not enough, how about this? Deion Sanders, get ready for your first taste of Alcorn State because that's when Jackson State takes on Alcorn in a game that we all know is like a state holiday in the state of Mississippi. So those will be some great classics that they'll continue in the spring, but with the twist, because as we know, the SWAC is a king of a classic. And if that's not enough, how about this, fan, football fans? Next season, they're going to add one more classic because <laughs> Thune Cookman versus Florida A&M will now be their first game playing the Florida Classic as both teams be part of the SWAC. So the classic conference continues to grow and just get better. You know, Jay, um, that Florida Classic is just going to add just another layer of drama, okay? Uh, another layer of fandom that is such a, a good fit within the SWAC. And, and, and we've obviously covered it um, for televisions the last few years uh, with ESPN. And so to see uh, all of this just, just blessings, okay? This is like a gold mine if you're a college football fan right here with the SWAC in terms of its classics it's matchups. Joining us now, we have a special guest. His name, John Grant, Executive Director of the Celebration Bowl. And, and certainly we are excited to talk with you, John, just because of uh, this um, unusual year that we have gone through. And obviously we didn't get a chance to see the Celebration Bowl uh, in 2020. However, it's back better than ever in 2021. Is that correct? That is correct. We we're excited uh, to be bringing the game back uh, to football fans uh, across the country and specifically HBCU football fans. 
uh, in December of 2021. And uh, it, it uh, we know that fans are going to be excited to to have the game back. And uh, our team is already uh, working hard to make sure that we are uh, creating, you know, the best experience possible for the players, for our fans and for the administrators and even for the viewers that are watching. You know, one of the things, John, I know when, when the game got together, when it was organized, it was we're going to have an HBCU national championship. And it was, you know, some great battles there. And you always take pride in the fact that even though you thought the game never went like people thought, how many games were decided by one score or less? I mean, they're all such competitive games and, and the viewership got out there. What have been some of the joys and the memorable moments you take back from the Celebration Bowl since its beginning? Well, for me, the, the, you know, the memorable part uh, primarily is just watching, you know, the, how the players responded from the time they got off the bus uh, here in Atlanta. And we had people there to greet them uh, through their, you know, experiences in the hotel, through the venues, the events. Uh, and, um, you, you know, just watching how they soaked it all in and our ability to, to create an environment for them that was special. Uh, and the fact that they responded to it in very special ways with their play on the field. And secondly, Jay, um, how the fans have responded, uh, enjoying being in a venue like Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, and, um, and, and really, uh, you know, sort of taking in all of the moments and our responsibility to our team as we confidently preach is that we want to make sure we're creating a world-class experience for everyone who engages with our brand. In terms of what we have seen, uh, just based on this global pandemic, we found that you know people, um, businesses, corporations, everybody's having to find a way to reinvent themselves. And so, for 2021, I guess give us a glimpse of what's in store and how do you make it bigger and better. Well, let me first reflect back on, on 2020 because when it was announced. Um, by the SWAC conference and certainly the MEAC conference that they were, um, you know, pausing all football for the fall. Uh, our team quickly pivoted to make sure that we were still bringing value for both the MEAC SWAC challenge and the celebration bowl. We uh, launched a series in partnership with Allstate to deliver um, virtual development seminars to student athletes across both conferences, as well as with the CIAA and the SIAC schools as well. Um, we had a uh, virtual watch party for the MEAC SWAC Challenge, as well as a re-air. The re-air game was the highest um, watch show uh, on ESPNU for that day. Uh, we re-aired the Celebration Bowl. Um, you know, fans were so itchy about HBC football and there was nothing happening. We did a relaunch with that along with the virtual watch party that you guys were involved with for both um, events. And so we wanted to make sure that we kept uh, the you know, the Celebration Bowl brand, as well as the MEAC SWAC brand, you know, connected to fans and were able to provide them something uh, to fill the void um, around HBC football by re-airing both of those games that, that occurred in 2019. Now for 2021, you know, it's full speed ahead for this year. Um, you know, we're really excited. We've got a new title sponsor uh, for this year's, uh, these year's events. And going forward, we were happy to announce our partnership well, with, with Cricket Wireless, who now have, you know, branded both uh, both games, and we're looking forward to the Cricket um, Celebration Bowl in 2021. And I was going to ask you, hey, followed up, I want to hear from you. Give me the official title of the Celebration Bowl and the Meat uh, Spot Challenge. For the well, challenge. we've got, it, it, you know, the, both games are going to, are going to be in, uh, branded by Cricket. As you know, Cricket Wireless has made a big push into the HBC space. So, you know, we're going to have the Cricket Max Swat kickoff as well as the Cricket Celebration Bowl. That is the official title of both the games. Cricket. No wireless, just the Cricket. Just Cricket. That's, you know, and, and we're hopeful <laughs> as, as we play it for them, you know, just as, um, you know, when when one of their competitors whose name start with a, started with a V that I can't mention, um, you know, it's, they started out with their name and wireless. And over time, they were able to build the brand strong enough that didn't require the wireless. And we're going to work very hard to make sure that we are able to build Cricket's brand strong enough that when you just say Cricket, they won't need to add the wireless on the end. 
And we believe that, you know, the things that we're gonna do on a national scale, uh, at a national level, with, with uh, their engagement with us at ESPN events, that we'll be able to do that. When you think about some of the uh, memorable moments and, you know, the football player me, I got two moments that stand out. And I gave you the opportunity. So give me the top two moments that you from the celebration ball. Man, you asked me a very tough question, Jay. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, within this bowl game, there have been so many. Um, you know, I, I think about, you know, in the very first celebration bowl, uh, Tariq Cohen running for 295 yards, but the breakaway run that he had when, um, when North Carolina, when Alcorn retook the lead and, um, you know, he, he had a breakaway run to take the lead back. I think about the block kick um, that Grambling uh, had to the game by one point against um, North Carolina Central. But that, that occurred because of the help, the penalty called on the, um, you know, the excessive <laughs> celebration that occurred at the Celebration Bowl. Uh, and so, you know, to name so one. You got it. Yeah, you I was about to say, well done, done. John. Yeah, you said it. That, that was me. I mean, you could have stopped short. You could have said, hey, Tariq Cohen rushed for 295 yards. That that moment, I don't know if that's ever going to be broken. And then what people started calling the excessive celebration bowl. <laughs> North Carolina round receiver was penalized and they lost by one point to Graham. All that being said, as a being a part of the Eastern Celebration Bowl, it's been a pleasure to be a part of it all and to see the game grow and try to help you all grow. So I want to say that for me personally, that can be successful. Thank you so very much. And I want to thank you. I want to thank Tiffany. You know, none of this happens without you guys and what you have both from the very beginning contributed to the success of, of the game, not only just during the game, but you've been great ambassadors throughout the season and throughout, you know, with, with HBCU football in, in uh, promoting, uh, advocating, and preaching the value of, you know, these properties, both the Miami Swag Challenge and Celebration Bowl and their value uh, in the HBCU football space. And let me close by saying, you know, there, uh, you know, in, when you look at the look at the numbers, uh, quite frankly, and you consider total live audience, there's nothing out there as large as both the Celebration Bowl and the MEAC SWAC Challenge when you look at total live audience. So the opportunity to bring those platforms to have, you know, the SWAC players uh, participate on a, on a national stage, such as both of those um, bodes well for, for the players, for the institutions that participate, and for the SWAC conference. And we, we certainly appreciate their partnership as well. Well, everybody's just trying to catch up to things that we already know. And those are the gems that, you know, we've been able to take away from our HBCU experiences and thankful that we get a chance to share it uh, with a live national audience week in and week out. And certainly John, thank you for your uh, ambassadorship just throughout uh, to help make sure we push to keep those properties alive and seen and noticed and appreciated. So we appreciate your time and thank you so much. Thank you. And let me finally say, you know, if I had crowns, you would definitely both be the queen and king <laughs> of HBCU football. And so thank you so much for all that you do. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I know that when we're talking about what's coming up on the show, we kind of delved in and you know, dived into to some of the topics that were kind of broad. But there's always one thing that I like to kind of skip over, but you never let me forget. So I'm going to go ahead and beat you to it because later in the show, you will bless us with your gimme five. And we're talking about the top five swag players of all time. Bam. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Now, this is great. I mean, I for the first time ever, I had to change the give me five because what? I can't do the best players. What? I just had to stay in my lane and I'll oh. be the top five quarterbacks of all time. Okay. See, see you're talking. saving yourself now. Because... Yeah, the players, man, I, I couldn't do it. That's, there's that much history in there. I mean, we can go top five quarterbacks. You can do top five running backs. You can do top five. So we did the coaches yesterday. So I'm going to stay in my lane. And I'm going to do the top five quarterbacks of all time. I'm sure everybody out there watching is appreciating you staying in your lane, Jay. Just this time. <laughs> just this one time. <laughs> I didn't play in the swag or else I'd have put myself in the list, but I guess I couldn't make the list because 
You know, I wasn't a swag guy. <laughs> Always wrapping it back around. Anyway, uh, we are so excited to, to bring you more teams today in this day to a virtual media day. So when we come back, we'll get a chance to talk with the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State, their head coach, when we come back. Hey, did you know in the 1800s, catch up was medicine? Did you know cricket has nationwide 5G? Wow, that's surprising. But true. And now I also know that in the 19th century, you would have been the picture of health. Surprising, but true. Cricket has nationwide 5G. Swack fans, now it's time for our team previews presented by USAA. Down in the Delta, Mississippi Delta. In Down Atlanta. in the Delta. Woo, down, down in the, in the Delta, Delta, Mississippi Valley State. Uh, coming off uh, a season where, you know, they're looking to uh, improve upon, you know, some of the things that they did. They're led by their third-year head coach, Vincent Dancy. And he joins us now. And, and Vincent, you know, my first trip down to Itabina was uh, your game against Jackson State, and y'all put on a show, okay? And it was it was a great time. It was it was great competition, and and I, I enjoyed it. And I was like, you know what? I wouldn't mind going back. Um, but when you look at the product that you were able to putting on the football field, and the way your guys were competitive, that's what stood out to me most, just the fight in your team. Will we see more of that fight and, and what more can we expect to see uh, from the Delta Devils this season? Uh, no doubt about it. Um, I think we, we built this team on fight, playing hard. I mean, that's, that's one of our mottos, you know, playing hard, giving it all you got. So of course you'll see the same fight, but you'll see a better overall team. Um, we took our losses. We learned from our losses. Uh, we had a we had we went back and watched every, all all the film, uh, especially throughout the, the coronavirus. So we went back and watched every game, and we seen what we need to learn from. And I think we had the players to learn from what they've done since they've been here. Because you gotta understand, most of these guys that came in were young. They were young. We were playing a lot of young guys, and now these guys have grown. They're sophomores and juniors. So we 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 we've done a lot. Uh, when we've been out this 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 uh, doing this coronavirus to to see where we need to be as a team as a whole what we need to do to move forward so we learned a lot and we're gonna we're gonna stay competitive we're gonna be competitive we just want to turn those into wins uh, and you know one thing about it and we said it for years you know coaches come in and say we're gonna try to turn around and we're gonna try and get our own players in there and things of that nature but one thing I will say coach I saw the fight. There was that fight there. The, as Tiffany said, the battle you all had with Jackson State, that was one for the ages. What do you do to tell a, a team like you have, okay, we've proven we can play with some of these teams in the conference week in and week out. How do you get over the hump and turn those losses into victories? Jay, I think everything is a process. I think when I first took this job, we had to learn how to even compete, learn how to be competitive in this conference. And I thought we did that in the first in the first year that I took the job. We learned to play hard. We learned to play tough. We learned that if we play hard and play tough for 60 minutes, we'll be in games. Then that second season rolled around. We was competitive. Of course, we was in games with Tennessee State, Lamar overtime, uh, Jackson State. And uh, I thought our guys just needed to learn how to win at that point. We didn't know how to win. So it's like a baby, you you know, you start to maneuver, then you start to crawl, then you start to walk. And I think this season, having these guys on a program for three years now, that they that they understand how to win. And it's our job as coaches to put them in the correct positions to win those games. And like I said, we've been evaluating ourselves a lot. And I know these players have took it upon themselves to, to do more. So I think that's the process in any program. So that's what we've been doing. Now, this is a school of Willie Todd and Parnell Dickinson. Who's going to play quarterback for y'all this upcoming season? Oh, man, we got a competitive quarterback group. Not ready to name a starter. We brought in the transfer, Jelani Easton from Portland State. Uh, we already had Chandler Robinson in-house. We brought in a freshman um, from Texas. So we kind of loaded at that position right now. We got a lot of – I mean, we can really say now this year we got a lot of quarterback competition that's going to be going on in the spring. So I'm not ready, really ready yet to name a starter, but we are competitive at that position, and I'm really satisfied with that position. Defensively, fortunately for you all, uh, you guys got Jerry Gardner coming back, Mr. Yes, Jerry Gardner, who led the SWAC in sacks a season ago. Uh, talk about this young man, what he's been to your program, because we're going to have an opportunity to talk to him next. Uh, man, I tell you what, you know, uh, 
talking about Jerry Gardner, man, it's 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 it gets it, it touches me because he's the type of kid that came in as a walk on. He was a walk on, a, 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 a true, a, the true epitome of a kid that you want in your program, not only your program, but but as a son, because he he's done everything right, everything you can ask for. He graduates in May. Uh, he would go to grad school. He's going to have an extra year. But I'm talking about a kid who walked on the Mississippi Valley um, and, 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 and just every day he worked. Every day he worked. And, and, and I say, look, and, I, and now look at him. He, I, I tell people all the time, uh, good things happen for good people. And that's the type of person he is. And as you can see, good things are starting to happen for him. And I just want him to continue to work hard, continue to, you know, to put God first, man. I mean, he's, he's a leader in our FCA. He's just a pure example of what you want to have as a leader on your football team. And I can't say, I can't, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great feeling to have a young man like that on your team. No matter what he does for me on the field, it's the off the field things that matter. And I'm so blessed to have him as a uh, football player. Well, Jerry, you just heard your head coach, I mean, really give you such high praise uh, just about the type of not only man you are, but the leader you are on and off the field. So we are so excited to sit it up here and chat it up with you as well. When you're looking forward to this football season, what did you say in the off season to say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better for my team. What was that? Well, I know I just came off a good year. So coming in, I know I got a lot of people looking up to me, a lot of players looking at me to capitalize on that. And as a leader on the defense, I know they're looking at me. I got to stay on it. If I'm falling off, then the rest of the team, they're not going to they not gonna get on board with me. So I just told myself, I'm going to stay I'm gonna stay in front. I'm going to be the leader. When I, we work out, when we run, I try to be first. I try to do everything first. When we in line, going to practice, doing drills, I try to be first. So when I'm working out with myself, I'm telling myself I'm going to do better than the other folks that's working out too. Jerry, you had nine sacks a season ago to lead the conference. Uh, that's a disruptive ball player there. Uh, what's been the key? What has been some of the keys to your ability to be able to get to the quarterback? Well, I'll say first, my first step, um, my coach, Coach Moody, my former D-line coach, he taught me a lot of different moves because I didn't play D-line coming out of high school. So him coaching me, he helped me a lot. So just handwork, speed, and power. But uh, with that being said, so what are, what are some of the drives? We heard Coach talk about, you know, the type of young man that you are. Uh, who's your inspiration? What, where, where do you get that motivation and that drive from? Uh, my father. My father, he, he, he's a major role model in my life. Uh, he got a big heart. Do anything for anybody, don't look for no pay. So coming up, watching him, I learned a lot. He taught me a lot, gave me a lot of wisdom. So I try to walk in his footsteps, try to be a better man than he was. Well, you know, you've been walking through this process, right? A former walk-on, second team, all SWAC selection a season ago. Uh, Jay mentioned you led the conference in sacks. So you're a part of changing that culture and helping the program to get better and leaving your footprint. And uh, we also have heard all day um, from, from, from our yesterday to now, we talk about the student athlete, right? And you're graduating this spring with an engineering uh, technology degree. So congratulations in advance for that. We are going to ask you to do something though. We're going to ask you to go 60 seconds with us. We're going to put you on the hot seat. We're going to ask you a number of questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. So what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> uh, my When I was young, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a civil engineer. I thought they, they build a lot of bridges and different things to try to make the environment better. So that was a dream of mine being too. If you could have a conversation with three people, past or present, who would it be? Jamie Foxx, uh, Kevin Hart, and Mike Gills. Uh, so do you have a funny bone in you? Yeah, I'm goofy. <laughs> Your least favorite team in the conference? Jackson State. And if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? I want to go to Hawaii. Lastly, what's your hidden talent? Can you cook well? Can you sing? What can you do? Uh, I can sing. You got to hit us with it. Just a little something. I, nah, mean, I, I, can't, can't, I can't do y'all like no, that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Save by the bell. Nah, Save yeah, by the bell. <laughs> 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 
We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Jerry. Congratulations on all that you're doing and good luck for this season. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. All stay right. tuned with us. We'll be back with more because on the other side, we'll hear from the Panthers of Prairie View a and Hey, did you know in the 1800s, catch up was medicine? Did you know cricket has nationwide 5G? Wow, that's surprising. But true. And now I also know that in the 19th century, you would have been the picture of health. Surprising, but true. Cricket has nationwide 5G. You won't find a cleaner dressed head coach coming out of the SWAC West than this gentleman right here and Eric Dooley, head coach of the Prairie View and m Panthers. Hey, Tiffany, did, you, did you just take the easy way out? You said you won't find a better dressed coach in the SWAC West. Yeah, because so, so, oh, you don't want to get him and Hill in a competition because look, 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 we we, we can break that down. We can that break that smart. down. That was smart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we let everybody get their just due because I'm telling you, both of y'all come fresh all the time. I love it. But uh, Eric Dooley, we appreciate you coming on with us. Coming off a six and five season, tied for second best in the West. Um, just with everything that's gone on how much are you itching to get back on the football field drawing up the x's and o's and and just smell the grass well first of all thank you for having me uh i'm i'm, I'm excited uh you know it's been a long time you know uh we had opportunity to go through uh seven days of spring ball and you know you, you take a break for spring break and you think you're going to come back but there's there come the pause button uh we, well we'll come back in a month we'll come back in two months and it extend to three months so uh the time just went on and, and we started seeing that how important it was that we uh, keep our guys safe, uh, what was taking place, place in this world today. But uh, I'm extremely excited. I can't wait. Uh, that's my comfort zone. So, uh, and I know that my wife can't wait to get me out the house to start doing some football because all my football is in the house now. <laughs> Dooley, you know, one of the things that we always say is, you know, you y'all put up points. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Number one offense in the conference last year. And, 480 yards per game. However, you know what's coming. No more Dewanye Tucker. No more Jalen Morton. What's going on on the offensive side of the ball for you guys? Who are some of the key replacements going to be? Well, you know, uh, we, we pride ourselves on making sure that we have guys in those positions to uh, step up because we like to play, uh, you know, ones and twos as well. We, we say that our twos are our ones as well because we know that that time is going to come where a guy going to graduate. Uh, but we do have some guys that's coming back that's going to be very, very exciting. We have a, a, a competition right now at the quarterback position uh, in Trazon Connolly and uh, TJ Stark. But those guys are doing a, a great job right now, and uh, I'm, I feel comfortable with either one. Uh, just can't name the starter right now. They're still competing uh, as we speak. Uh, and when you're talking about the running back shoes, that's going to be a huge, some huge shoes to fill. We do understand that. Uh, but we've got a couple of uh, guys that's coming back, Bernard Goodwater. Uh, we feel real confident in things that he does. Uh, he was a special team guy for us last year, played sparingly, uh, not as much. And we got a, uh, like we call our home run hitter, uh, Christian Mosley. So we feel comfortable in that position. Uh, it's, they, it's their time now. So now they've got to step up. Uh, you know, you always want to play, so it's the next man up. If you'd have told me those guys were as good as DeWine A. Tucker, I'd have said, man, you're lying to me because we all know Tucker was special. He's going to be hard to replace. Uh, something that shocked me, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, you guys lost to Alcorn, Southern, and Jackson State, your three conference losses. Combined total, you know how many points you lost by combined? 13 points. You guys were 13 points away from possibly running the table in, in conference play there. How do you make up those 13 points? You're absolutely right. Uh, I, I know you thought of it because you're a football guy. Uh, and, and I know Tiffany probably had that in her stat as well. But uh, we did. I did take a look at that. That was one of the first things that I took a look at, how close we were. But, you know, I, I look at situations as how we could have changed the game and controlled the game. And, you know, certain situations dictate certain things that uh, we had opportunity. We had a, a great opportunity down in Alcorn. Uh, we didn't finish. Uh, we had a great opportunity at Southern. There comes that word again. We didn't finish. We had a great opportunity against Jackson State. We didn't finish. So those are things that we are uh, focusing on right now to finish. And, and I think, uh, you know, the last three games of the uh, season uh, put us over that hurdle. Those were the games. You know, we hadn't, hadn't won a close game in a while. 
and, and we had an opportunity to go through that. So I, I thought we closed the door right there. We crossed over that hurdle. And I, I'm, I'm excited about this year. here. I, I feel it. Uh, those close games now are coming out of favor. Because for the first time, dude, I'll be honest, I looked at the preseason all-conference team, and I said, what? You got four defensive players from Prairie View playing for Eric Dooley down there? Talk about the defense and why there's a little excitement in the air about what you all may be able to do defensively this year. Oh, I'm, I'm extremely excited about the defense side of the ball. I knew what I had coming back. Uh, of course, I got a young man that's going to come on that I think the world of right now. Uh, but I, I knew it was just like I say, certain drives, certain things that we had to do. And, you know, you give the uh, offense a lot of credit of uh, uh, being the number one offense. But, you know, sometimes I put it on on our back. You got to close the game. You got to seal the game. You got the ball in your hands. I don't care if it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds. You got to go win it. You can't just uh, rest on that. The defense going to stop them. Just close the deal. So. Uh, those things that uh, I feel really excited about the defense. We got a lot of guys coming in, of course. Uh, then I was signing. We signed a lot of guys defensively. Uh, I would say uh, on the defensive line. So I'm excited about it. Secondary is probably one of the most experienced secondary in the conference. And uh, it's going to be really exciting. I can say that. Well, welcome in to the first team all swag performer for from a season ago, Jalen Harris, one of the DBs in that secondary for the Panthers. Uh, glad to have you with us. Look, you were coming off a, a, a terrific season, and, and Jay will dive into some of those numbers, but uh, where do you feel like that maturation process has taken you from last year in preparation to now? Uh, I would say it just made me a little bit more hungry to go out there and see how good I can get, so it just makes me want to continue the process, you know, putting work in, you know, just sharpening little things so I can uh, come out there and perform on the level I, I want to perform on. Jalen, you've seen Prayer View where there were times it felt like you knew that the Panthers had to go out there and outscore and outgun everybody. Now the defense is starting to, to get a little bit better, but what challenges are you guys taking on as a unit to try and lessen the load of the offense? Uh, I think uh, you just got to echo what Coach Dooley said. It's more about going out there and just finishing. You know, if we do our part, we finish drives or we finish big plays and we create turnovers, we'll have a better opportunity to, you know, win and dominate and uh, just accomplish the goals as a team that we set, you know, at the beginning of the season. And for those people that may not know, you know, you started out your career uh, playing minor league baseball. How was that transition? How did being a, a minor league baseball player help you in becoming a top tier college football player? I think the exposure, just to seeing how uh, professionals move and just the routines they have and the consistent, the consistency that everybody is uh, chasing, you know, that kind of something that stuck with me over the years. And I just know that uh, there's always another level to get to, you know, there's always a, a new challenge, you know, it's always something else that you can do to be better. And it's just all about chasing, you know, that perfect zen of finding you know, just the perfect space to be in as an athlete. You're not done yet because you and I, we have a little back and forth to go through. Jay got the clock going. We're going 60 seconds with Prairie View A&M's Jalen Harris. Let's go. All right, more superstitious. Football players or baseball players? Baseball players, without a doubt. Better dress, you or Coach Dooley? I'm going to give it to Coach Dooley. Ooh, he said, I'm going to give it to you. Mm. You talked about Prairie View a and Why did you choose it? It's all about the opportunity to do what I love to do. Favorite meal? Mm. Kibachi, chicken and rice. Mm. Good call, good call. Your role model? My father. Why? You know, I learned a lot from him. You know, he taught me how to work hard and just how to deal with life and just always keep pushing forward. Lastly, tell me, um, what's your dream job? My dream job to be a defensive back on somebody's roster in the NFL. We appreciate you going 60 seconds with us, Jalen. We appreciate the time. Congratulations on earning your bachelor's in psychology. Keep working hard. Get that master's in educational administration, what, 3.0 and above? Is that right? Yeah, I graduated with honor. 
Uh huh. He was like, okay, okay, yeah. That, that's that's just a little something. That's what I come to expect. That's what I do. So congratulations to you and good luck, man. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in-store pickup. It's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in-store. Get in, get out, get back to having fun with your family. Welcome back, Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you. And look, the Southern Jaguars finished off the season 8-5. and five. They only dropped one conference game as they went on to the SWAC championship game representing the west and with us now is their head coach dawson odoms coach odoms thanks so much for joining us always a pleasure to be on thank you guys for having me all right so i'll just get right to it and ask you coach obviously um there have been many opportunities where you've been knocking on the door right there so what's it going to take for you guys to take control of the swag again and get over that hump and make it to the celebration bowl well we got a really good football team coming back. Uh, the biggest thing is just staying healthy. Uh, didn't have much of an offseason, so the culture of the locker room got to, it's got to supersede the obstacles that we face. So hopefully these seniors that are coming back will be great leaders and be able to keep us together because it's going to be difficult. But I really think with the leadership we have coming back and the players that we have that have the experience coming back, I think we got a really good opportunity to play, especially during this pandemic. But I think if we can get our culture right that's going to be the hardest thing we got to get our hands on is making sure that our culture carry us through the pandemic. If that happens, we got a chance to reach that uh, championship game again. Let me ask you this, Coach Odoms. How good is your football team this year? You know, you've been around. This is your team, your program. How good of a team do you feel you have to put on the field this upcoming season? Well, based on the players we have coming back in the experience, uh, I think this is this team is just as good as the team we had last year. A lot of the pieces of that puzzle are coming back. Uh, we didn't lose a whole lot of guys. So when you look at it from what's coming back and what you lost on offense, uh, we lost Hunter Register. Uh, everybody else will be back. Our offensive line will be back. The majority of those guys play. Uh, our quarterbacks will be back. Our running backs will be back. Our tight ends will be back. Uh, we lost Jeremiah Houston uh, and Jeremiah Abbey. Other than those guys, everybody else is back, and we play a lot of guys. Uh, defensively, a lot of guys are coming back. Uh, we lost Calvin Lunkins, who was a, a tackle a dominator for us. But other than that, uh, up front, we lost C.J. Bryan and the Cavian Chapman. Everybody else is back. We had two corners that missed last year that will get back that will start us for us as true freshmen. So the depth of our football team is as good as it's ever been. Uh, I really like the talent that we have, but we just hadn't had the time to put it together. And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge for all coaches. When you get an opportunity to get your guys there and you break down the film from last year moving forward, what were some of the areas of improvement you all thought you need to make as a squad? Well, the biggest thing is just taking care of the football. Uh, I thought we did a, a good job of it, but not a great job of it offensively. And defensively creates some takeaways. Uh, we didn't do a great job of that. And I think if we can do those two things better, uh, we're going to be right in the hunt. And when you look at your schedule from a season ago, and I know numbers really don't count, but you guys were there with everybody. You can beat everybody. The only team that beat you by double digits is Alcorn. They did it to you twice. How do you overcome that? How do you get over that hurdle, which has been the Alcorn State Braves? Well, I think when you look at it from probably 20, 2014, um, they have been the most dominant team. Uh, and the most consistent team. And the biggest thing with defeating them is, is that, you know, we went through a lot of battles uh, where we didn't have our scholarship numbers where they needed to be. And we're slowly gaining on them. I think from the time we played them early in the year to the championship game, uh, six turnovers is going to be hard to beat anybody. Uh, but I really thought that our football team finally was to a point to where physically we could compete with them. And I think our guys knew they, they got away with one. Uh, we didn't play our best in that championship game and still had a chance to win, even with the turnovers that we had, the, the negative plays. Uh, it went back and forth. It was an exciting football game. But I really think we learned a lot from that game, and I think our guys are eager to get back on the field and face them again. Man, how excited, how excited are you that all corners moving from the east, coming over to the west in the swag? Got to be excited about that. Well, I got mixed emotions. 
<laughs> Somebody finally gonna tell me the truth. Thank you. <laughs> I got I got mixed emotions because I really, you know, I look at things from uh don't dethrone the champion, don't take something away from it. And mm. I thought they had been the most dominating team on their side and they didn't get a chance to defend it. And that's how I look at it as a coach and a player. And moving them over to our side, I don't look at whether it's balanced, whether it's unbalanced, because you know you're in, you're out. Teams are going to get better. It's going to be different every year you look at it. Uh, we welcome them to the Wild Wild West. We've always played them in the house, so it's just like they were on the west side. Uh, but I, I really thought they should have had a chance to defend, you know, their crown. I think, what, five years in a row, you've been a dominating team on that side, and then to not lose it. And they take it away from six years in a row. Six years in a row, and then you don't you don't get a chance to defend that. I think that's mixed emotions for me because I respect their program, and I, I believe they earned that. And that's just how I look at it as a coach. Well, check out the dapper Devon Ben, the Southern Jaguars running back, an All Conference performer from a season ago. Appreciate you being with us. Let's get right into it. Look. Over 2,000 yards in your career, uh, you're coming back for uh, your final season. And, and for you, um, just how much pride do you take in leading that offense from the backfield, especially given the fact that you guys were tops in the conference for rushing attack? Um, it's amazing it feeling being the head of this offense, you know, kind of standing next to Ladaria. So, well, our quarterback ends up in. Like, it's just, it feels good to know that I have kind of control of our team. And whatever I see kind of goes, because they listen and they, they follow my lead. And that's, that's just an amazing feeling to be able to be in that position. You averaged 5.3 yards per carry last season. For those people that haven't seen you tote the football, how would you describe your running style? Who are some of your influences at the running back position? My all-time favorite running back is LaDamian Thompson. And as if anybody who knows how LaDamian Thompson runs, that's kind of who I model my game after. I was, I'll, I would either have to run through you. I, I wouldn't prefer to, but if I have to, that's what I'm going to go to. But I like to make guys miss. And keep the ball moving. Always fall forward. What team does Southern University, as a football player, do you dislike more? Is it Grambling or is it all corn? I mean, I treat we treat each opponent the same. I mean, we don't. Nah, man, nah, we, man, nah, nah. We nah, got nah. a game. We don't like. You ain't going there. <laughs> if I had to pick one, it would be Alcorn. Sure. Yeah, that sets up for the sixty seconds. Uh, we're gonna put you on the hot seat. Jay's got the clock going. We're gonna get it going right now. Okay, you're from New Orleans, but you chose Southern over some other schools. Why? It, uh, it was just a family here. When I came on my visit, they they took me in. They showed me around. It was just like a family environment. I saw how the guys interacted with each other. And I just like that type of environment. Ton of greats that played at Southern. Your favorite Jaguar? My favorite Aeneas. All mm -hmm. right, nice answer. When you're thinking about food, best restaurant in Baton Rouge? Ooh. Our mom. Ooh, gotta try that out. Your role model? My role model, my dad. I love these answers of fathers. And then lastly, um, what's one thing you like about your coach? Uh, coach Jordan, he, he's just a great guy. He's a great coach. Um, I can talk to him about anything and I can, uh, he's just, he he's there for me when I need him. All right. All right. I love the closet that you've gone into to, to pick up this outfit. We got the bow tie. I mean, both you and Coach Odom's looking fresh, all business come uh, this season for the Southern Jaguars. We look forward to, to seeing you guys. Uh, hey, Tiffany, can I mess with him? You know, you, know, you know who don't care what he got on? <laughs> the G-Man of Grambling State uh -uh. University. <laughs> I already knew where you were going with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a rivalry's all about. <laughs> the future waits for no one. So we refuse to wait for it. We're not just pilots and engineers, we are pioneers.
Today, battles are waged in nanoseconds, and planes are piloted from the other side of the world. We turn night into day and fly missions in space. The future is not coming, it's already here. This is the future. Join us and be the future. Joining us now, Texas Southern head coach Clarence McKinney and coach Look, the Tigers are coming off a, a tough season. And, and there's no other way to say it. However, there are some positives that you can always draw from a season. What can you build on going into the spring? Although we didn't win a game, in each and every game my guys played from the opening kickoff to the final whistle. And, and we played hard and that, that was a goal of ours to, to play hard. And now it's just um, us taking the next step as far as winning starting winning games and putting that hard work uh, into place. You know, Coach, surprisingly, when, when I look back and go back and look at the numbers, for a team that didn't win a football game, you expect to see them last in this category, last in this category, last in this category. Your offense was number four in the back, in total offense. And we know this is an offensive-minded conference, respectable. Defense, however, number 10, giving up over 550 yards per game. What do you do to shore up your defensive side of the football? Well, uh, we started with bringing in some players that we felt like we, we had needs. You know, we, we brought in some, some guys at some positions that, that were thin on last year. And I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but defensively we lost 14 guys to season ending injury. So we were playing with a lot of walk-ons, a lot of guys that uh, we, we thought would play on one side of the ball, we had to, uh, at the last minute, move them to the other side of the ball. And guys just weren't comfortable playing in those positions. Let me ask you this. Last year was your first year as a head coach at Texas Southern. What did you learn about the SWAC from a coaching perspective? Well, it starts with the SWAC being a, a good football league, you know, each and every every night, it doesn't matter. And I'm sure uh, teams that played us can tell you we were we hadn't won a game, but they were in a dogfight. So each and every every game you play, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough game. I think there's a, a lot of balance within the swag, and on any give, given Saturday, teams can be beat. And one thing about it, you know, you you've made your your bread and butter as, as a recruiter. You know, you can recruit, you can recruit that area. You talked about having to have ties there locally. What's been the challenge of recruiting? You know, because we know that these high school kids and junior college kids, first thing they're looking at is 0 and 11. What's been the challenge, and how do you overcome the challenge of recruiting right now? Well, um, our staff has done a tremendous job in recruiting. I think, especially within this COVID quarantine, is. The COVID has been the biggest challenge, um, but we, we got 20 guys committed before the summer. So uh, I think our staff has done a, a tremendous job of, of uh, evaluating talent and recruiting, recruiting the guys that we feel like we need to help us uh, take that next step. Uh, probably our biggest challenge to answer your question um, has been fighting the history of the program. Not just the O and 11, but just us not having been traditionally a, a, a powerhouse and, and trying to get guys to understand that they can come here and, and, and help us build that tradition. And then I don't like to harp on the negative. Give me some of the positive things about your football team and about Texas Southern University. Well, from a football standpoint, the positives are we return, you know, some of the best players that I feel like are in our, in our league. I think uh, Donnie Corley, our receiver, is one of the best receivers in the country, uh, in any league, uh, along with um, we returned a guy like Julian Markintel, who was a preseason all swag linebacker who didn't have a chance to play on last year due to injury. Um, and then there, there are uh, quite a few others I, I could name off the whole roster, but we, I feel like our, our program is going in the right direction. Um, we're building it the right way. And I think, um, we're gonna we're gonna start seeing a lot more wins in those in that win column. But when it comes to Texas Southern, I mean, what more can you say? It's, it's a tremendous university, in one of the greatest cities in the country, and uh, big things are about to happen here on campus. What is what was it like 
playing in the SWAC? Your first time through the conference, what were some of the memories and experiences you learned about the conference? I, I love it playing in the SWAC. Um, you know, one of my greatest uh, experiences playing there was the, uh, the game change between us and Southern where uh, we got to play in the Cotton Bowl and I'm from Dallas. So uh, being able to go back home and uh, play in front of a home crowd, it was, it was, that's the experience I'll never forget. What are you gonna try and do to help get yourself to the next level? Uh, just working on speed work, um, working on my feet, working on throwing with the guys. Uh, you know, we would have to come up with somewhere where we, where we, where we could go to throw. And, you know, we did that quite often and just building that relationship with those guys and more and just being on point with everything that I want to be. And, uh, you know, just things like that. All right. Give me some of the things you learned during quarantine. You got to motivate yourself to do what you want. And um, I feel like that was a big thing because everything's kind of shut down. And so I feel like uh, just the hustle and, you know, the mindset of uh, is this what you want to do? And, you know, finding the love and things like that for the game. All right. Any specific skills that you picked up during that time? I'd say just improving my skills. Um, like being able to move better in the pocket, being able to extend the plays, uh, arm strength and uh, arm, the accuracy and just, you know, watching film and uh, just throwing to those guys. So our timing is on point with everything and play wise. So I feel like all those came into point when we were in quarantine and I feel very comfortable with everything going into, into the season. All right, we look forward to seeing what Texas Southern can do this season. We appreciate it. And we'll talk with University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions. We'll look to hear from their head coach when we return. We make USAA renters insurance for families on the move. We know moving is hard, so we make getting and changing your coverage easy. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Well, we talked about some fresh faces throughout the conference, and there's going to be one roaming the sidelines for the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. They welcome in their new head coach, Charles Dot Gamble. And so we're going to see what he can do with the Golden Lions as he joins us now. Coach, you're, you're inheriting a team that was 6-5 and five last season, so they had a, a winning campaign in 2019. Um, just in your first season, what are you hoping to accomplish with the Golden Lions? Uh, first year as a head coach, really is just to, to continue on to build on the momentum that we uh, that we got going right now uh, from last season to now, and uh, it's been a good transition and for us to do so. So it's unlike somebody else coming in, not really knowing uh, what they're getting into, you know, it's uh, for me is for us to continue to build and, and 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 get our guys and everybody not to be satisfied with with just going six and five. There's been a lot of patting on the back and, and, and uh, a lot of handshakes and congratulations for being six and five, but we still, you know, we were at the bottom 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 half of our uh, side of the conference at, uh, with a six and five record. You know, we want to make sure that uh, six and five become just an average year for us, you know, so, and, and not where we're uh, sounding alarms and, and setting off fireworks, but we want to be doing that when we plan for championships and winning championships. What's up, Doc? Hey, what's going on? You've heard that a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but Doc, well, I, I tell you what, if you call me Charles, then everybody know that you don't know me at all. So, okay, <laughs> all right. I, I could play. See, Tiffany, I could play for him because yeah. you know, this is an offense that was second in the conference last year in passing yards. I like that over 282 yards per game to go along with a thousand yard rusher in Taylor Porter, who's no longer with you. You lost a uh, eligibility graduation. Yeah. So now I'm trying to say, who replaces Taylor Porter, who was such a vital piece of your offense? Well, again, uh, we have uh, Keyshawn Williams. He'll be returning. And Keyshawn was a was a starter uh, prior to us getting to, coming on board here uh, in 2018. You know, he'll be back, and it's going to be a host of others right now. But you know, he's the guy. Guy, you know, he's just as good as Taylor. Uh, you know, as long as he stays healthy, he, he's probably one of the better ones, better guys that you will see around in the country. Then we got Omar Allen, uh, who saw action last year. 
then we got a junior college transfer as well, who's a speedy guy. Uh, we just waiting to see what he can do, uh, you know, in competition. But Omar, I guess he had a couple starts. Well, he played a lot, but he got a good start against, uh, he started a game last year for us against Jackson State. Uh, you know, and that, that position there, even though we're pretty much running one back, offense, you probably pretty much got to have a host of guys. And that's came into play last year, you know, with Taylor being hurt one game and, and then Keyshawn got hurt as well. So you got to have a host of guys that that's going to be able to step it up. You know, we'd like to have one guy guy, you know, so to speak, but uh, you know, if we can get a good crew uh, to help replace a, a Taylor Porter, which we, we do have a guy that can do it, but still, you know, we, we want to make sure all those guys are staying healthy. Shannon Patrick was your signal caller a season ago. He's no longer with the program. Enter Skylar Perry. What well, does Skylar Perry bring to the table? Well, we, we played a two quarterback system, uh, you know, the last, really the last two years. Uh, you know, and, and one guy really just wants to be the guy. Uh, Skylar started as a freshman due to injuries to, to Shannon. So, uh, so he has a lot of starts under his belt. You know, Skyler, Skyler would actually start off each game a year ago. Uh, I think all but three or four. Uh, so we feel good about with it, with, uh, with what Skyler brings. Skyler, he's still growing. He's still, he's actually extending. You know, so uh, and we feel real good about him as well. Hey, Tiffany, I, I take that back. I, I don't, I won't play for Doc. <laughs> I only want to be the one. <laughs> Don't look to the sideline. Uh, well, well, you you know you got to deserve to be the one, and when you deserve to be the one, you are the one. You know, so uh, with that, and and those guys know, you know, I'm, I'm tr kind of really not kind of really, but I am blunt floor. You know, I'm, I coach the quarterbacks, and I still coach the quarterbacks, and we do got a good quarterback coach in Ken Evans, and I've been kind of, you know, uh, I told him I ain't turning them over, turning those guys over to him just yet. You know, so. Uh, but, you know, I'm heavily involved with that, and, and I hold those guys to a high standard. One of the things that, that stood out to me was uh, Arkansas Pie Bluff had two members on the first team preseason all-conference. Ironically, they were two offensive linemen, a tribute to what you all did last year, running the football. We'll be joined by one of those linemen later. Talk about this group up front you have at the offensive line and what makes them a special bunch. Well, it, it's some challenges with that crew, but you, you know, the, the, the anchors of that O-line is uh, Mark Evans, who, be, who we're gonna speak with and uh, AJ Smith, definitely. Uh, you know, we still gotta find out who's gonna be our center, right guard, right tackle. Um, but the good thing about it is, is that the guys that we do have, they work well together. You know, we've been able to see it. It's just, uh, we know who those, the center, right guard and right tackle uh, could be. You, you know, now we just gotta make sure we gotta hopefully uh, they'll show growth uh, from going from scout team guys to to guys that are, are going to uh, letter, you know, varsity, uh, let, uh, letter and varsity games here um, this fall, this spring, rather. Mark Evans, we're going to need you to come on in here and lead the way. The preseason all-conference lineman for Arkansas Pine Bluff, one of two linemen that the Golden Lions had chosen to be all-conference preseason. Mark, you heard me talk to Coach a little bit earlier. What was it like to be a, a lineman blocking for a thousand-yard rusher a second ago? It was a great deal of pride blocking for T for Taylor Porter when he got a thousand yards. We went to every game trying to, you know, he giving it. He he gave us his all every game, so we tried to just do the same thing for him and try to get him to that thousand yard because he a thousand yard rusher. You know, he's thousand yard thousand yard rusher the year before that, so we just tried to, you know. Go out there, give it off, so you can get it again for the second season. But when I think of offensive linemen, particularly offensive tackle, at yes, Pine Bluff is one name I'm gonna mention. Who is that? Teron Armstead. He he set the standard. What do you got to do to get there? I guess I got to try to do the best I can to be as close as I can to get to what he did. I guess if I got to run as far four six forty at the combine, then I guess I got to do that. <laughs> Let's go underneath the helmet. And what's it like, what's the mentality have to be to be an offensive lineman in the SWAT? To be an offensive lineman in the SWAT, well, for one, you gotta have a you gotta have a quick mind. So you know you mess up on the play, you gotta, you gotta, you can't dwell on it for too long. You gotta go, you ready to go back to the next play. You, of course, you gotta be nasty and vicious going against the D line we got in the SWAT. You know, they ain't no pushover, so you know you gotta be ready for anything. 
Hey, I gave you the softball questions. Now you're about to go one on one with Tiffany Green for 60 seconds. We're gonna put the clock and the clock All right. starts right now. Talk All about right. eating. What's your favorite meal? Favorite meal had to be my mom's shepherd's pie. Ooh, shepherd's pie. That's a good one. Tell me something about Coach Gamble. Coach Gamble, you know, he's a world man guy. He doesn't really talk too much. He's like me, so you know, I like him a lot. All right. Why'd you choose UAPB? UAPB actually chose me, so. I like it. Role model. Role model back to my mama. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I would probably want to be able to read minds so I can see what the D-line is about to do. <laughs> the ball I like it. Get the <laughs> leg up and an advantage. <laughs> and least favorite team in the conference. Uh, you know, I like all the teams. They don't least favorite team in the conference. I like them all. I like Jay, competition. That's <laughs> it. That's that's the answer. He said, I don't like nobody. I mean, Grambling been like owning y'all for a while. And y'all, you gonna say you like them all? I like them all, man. You gonna see this season when we own them. So, you know. I like that. I think he's trying that reverse psychology right there. Okay, I can respect that. I can respect mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. We appreciate your time, Doc, Mark. Uh, certainly looking forward to seeing UAPB on the field this season. Thank you and uh, continue to stay safe. Yes, man. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll be coming Thank back you. with more. So stay right here because Jay's Give Me Five is on the other side. Hey, did you know in the 1800s catch up was medicine? Did you know cricket has nationwide 5G? Wow, that's surprising. But true. And now I also know that in the 19th century, you would have been the picture of health. Surprising, but true. Cricket has nationwide 5G. Welcome back, and thank you once again for tuning in to Virtual Football Media Days for the SWAC. I'm Tiffany Green, and with me now is the Assistant Vice President of Brand Programs and Sponsorships at USAA, Mr. Michael Dones. He's also a Morehouse man, so welcome in, Mr. Dones. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Tiffany. I appreciate it. So I'm curious to know, uh, tell me a little bit about USAA, right, and, and some of its core values. Yeah, no, happy to do it. Um, first, USAA is a um, financial services company right? Primarily focused on providing insurance and, and banking solutions uh, for families of the military community. Uh, been around almost 100 years. Um, and main focus is really the mission is facilitating uh, the financial security of, uh, of our members uh, and those members of the military community and their families. I would say, you know, in terms of our, our you know, core values and who we are as an organization, you know, it, it really is something that USAA takes very, very seriously. It's not just lip service. Um, we take core values seriously. It's the foundation of who we are in a lot of ways. And so our core values of service, loyalty, honesty, and integrity uh, are literally, believe it or not, etched in, in stone uh, in, in our facility, uh, in our main office, our home office uh, in San Antonio. Uh, and they, they really are meant to, to be a reminder uh, and, and remind us uh, sort of the mirroring of the values between the men and women who serve uh, in the military. Uh, and I think our ability is a, to, to service their financial needs um, uh, really stem from our belief in and our commitment to those, those core values. So uh, they're literally etched in stone and they're foundational to who we are. That's uh, why it's a great place to be. Now, we talked before uh, coming on just about our foundations within the HBCU landscape and just how it helped to uh, mold us and the tradition that we have within our families. Uh, USAA has uh, gotten in on the act, if you will, and made a huge commitment to supporting HBCUs. Um, why was that important to USAA? Yeah, we're, well, one, um, we're just super excited. Um, you know, all of us um, supporting the SWAC, uh, one of the nation's premier conferences. Um, you know, our intention is to, to demonstrate our commitment to serve uh, this important HBCU audience. Um, and I really intend to create, you know, memorable military uh, appreciation moments uh, as a part of this. So, you know, as the official military appreciation sponsor and, you know, the official insurance sponsor for the military community, in a lot of cases, that, appreciate, that appreciation 
um, is highlighting heroes and alumni uh, from HBCUs. And that is something that I think um, we can't do enough of. And so uh, we'll also be focused on providing, you know, professional development uh, opportunities, uh, jobs and internships uh, for students and alumni. So it's all really, it, it, it's really tangible, it's real, and, and it's important for us to, to step up and demonstrate uh, our commitment. Um, we know, I'll just say this, listen, we, we know that USA offers great products and services, um, but we wanna ensure that those who are eligible for USAA actually know they're eligible for USAA because it is a great company. Uh, and we understand that um, USAA is for this audience, this community too. And so we want them to know that. Well, you've, you've attached your brand and the company has attached itself to a winner, obviously. And when you're looking at just the top attendance in FCS football, uh, certainly there is an audience and an appetite for it. And they have produced certainly uh, several great men and women of the armed forces and beyond. And so when you, when you kind of holistically look at the SWAC and, and just how long it's been around, um, turned 100 years in 2020. I mean, what does it mean then for uh, this partnership, this synergy uh, to happen? Yeah, you said, I mean, that's amazing. 100 years is, is phenomenal. So first off, just congratulations to the SWAC. Uh, it's an impressive milestone, uh, no doubt. Um, you know, I think it's actually another great alignment uh, with, with USAA uh, because USAA actually turns 100 next year uh, in 2022. Right. So there's there's some synergy there. Um, but I think, as you said, it's just a great organization, a great uh, conference and the commitment to providing black college students with with quality education um, and opportunities. Um, is really mirrored by by our commitment to service uh, the military uh, community. Right. Um, and we know that the military community, frankly, as the country's demographics are evolving, the military community's demographics are also uh, evolving. Uh, and, you know, the diverse community faces unique challenges. And so we wanna step in and, and demonstrate our support, obviously for the community, but also work uh, to find solutions to support the financial needs of, of those um, young people uh, who are in school and the alumni for HBCUs. I think uh, we've got a great opportunity in partnering uh, with the SWAC. I think you kind of touched on some of uh, what is being done at a local level, on the grounds level, uh, with professional development and the appreciation days and, and letting people know when you're saying, okay, and, and help me to understand when you're approaching a partnership um, and you're looking at trying to align yourself with uh, entities that are... Um, you know, kind of similar thought and value. Um, how do you all, you know, how did you kind of see, look, building champions for life, that's the SWAC motto, um, you know, align and, and compare to uh, the USAA's mission and standards? Yeah, I think that's um, building champions for life. I mean, that's just really powerful. I love it. Um, so USAA's mission just, you know, is really, just facilitating financial security uh, for the men and women of the military community uh, and their families. And, you know, it's about, you know, standing by our members in, in good times, you know, tough times, uh, helping them build the financial future. And I think, um, you know, a lot of ways, the mission of the SWAC and USAA are, are really aimed at helping people succeed, right? It's almost a, you know, I don't want to sound too often, but it's 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 really a higher order uh, a, a mission. And so that alignment is really, really important. And I think, you know, for USAA aligning ourselves with a, with again, premier uh, 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 organization like the SWAC uh, certainly aligns with our brand, our mission. Uh, and there's, certain, there's great synergy there. We talked about the timing, both uh, almost 100 years old or 100 years old almost. And um, when you talk about, you know, building champions for life, um, you know, we're, we're, we've are we got a lot of our members who say they're going to be members uh, of USA for life uh, and, and, and many have been. Uh, so uh, there, there's great alignment with that. Lastly, um, for those 
uh, folks out there who are, are curious to learn, learn more about uh, USAA and, and its offerings uh, as to its specific community, um, where can they go? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, nowadays, you know, all the, the, the website, USAA.com uh, is the first stop. Uh, certainly all of our social media channels at USAA. Um, listen, we're, we're, we're just extremely proud to be the official uh, military appreciation sponsor of the SWAC. Uh, and as I said, official insurance sponsor serving the military community. That's, it's a big deal for us. Uh, the SWAC, eSports League, uh, along with football and basketball, uh, we're, we're just, uh, we think that, uh, listen, 2020 was certainly an anomaly, but as we're going forward, uh, we're, we're, we're excited about uh, where all this is headed and, and frankly, uh, encourage anybody who's interested to know more, go to, the, to, to our website, usaa.com. Um, check and see if you're eligible for membership, because in many cases you are, uh, and um, we'd love to have you. Uh, but also explore internship and, and career opportunities because that's a big part of our focus. And, and we want to make sure that uh, uh, folks understand that there are, are great careers here at USAA for uh, many of the students uh, at HBCU. So we're, we're excited and look forward to it. I love it. And I appreciate the passion and just genuine desire and interest in, in, in building champions uh, for life. Uh, thank you so much, Michael Domes, the Assistant Vice President of Brand Programs and Sponsorships at USAA. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Tiffany. Good to be with you, and I'll uh, look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll be back with more. Who is USAA made for? It's made for this guy, a veteran who honorably served, and it's made for her. She's serving now. We made it for all branches and all ranks. Whether they served one tour or made a career of it, we also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. USAA is easy to work with and can save you money on auto, home, and renter's insurance. Become a member today. Get an insurance quote at usaa.com slash quote. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Welcome back to the SWAC Football Virtual Media Days, where we like to take time out to thank those who make the investment into HBCU sports. And we're joined now by Chris Woods, who's the Regional Marketing Manager for Academy Sports and Outdoors. Chris, we thank you for your time and, and thanks for joining. Thank you, I'm thrilled to be here. So it makes sense then because some of your footprint is in you know, SWAC areas that you would say, hey, let's step up to the plate and make a commitment to supporting HBCUs. What's the why behind it? Yeah, it's, it's important to us in such a trying year. Um, Academy serves many of the communities where HBCUs are located. Not only that, we have a network of team members, customers uh, who are proud HBCU alum and passionate about traditions, history, and excellence of HBCUs. So uh, we're proud to partner with SWAG to make a bigger impact in those communities uh, and to be a part of those traditions and work to build uh, meaningful relationships with local youth in these communities. Especially inside uh, the HBCU world, many know uh, the swack of, of having that great, you know, tradition that you reference. But to the outside world, it's still a bit of an education. And now is no, uh, is any time, is as good a time as any, rather, uh, for those to learn about it. So just talk about how have you been able to educate, um, you know, the employees within Academy just about uh, HBCUs and the products that they produce? You know, it's 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 sort of a hand in hand conversation with so many internal team members uh, who are HBCU alum. Um, when we first announced the relationships, they were excited and it was sort of a, them taking it upon themselves to educate just the history and traditions of HBCUs. But I think with the commissioner and the support um, with the SWAC, uh, we're continually thinking about just different programs that we can involve our team members in, whether it's recruiting efforts, um, engaging student athletes. Um, there's a host of different things that we have on the table that continually uh, educate our, our team members and our customers around the tradition of HBCUs. And what are some of the things that you all are doing locally, you know, within those HBCU communities? Yeah, so starting this past holiday season, uh, Academy Sports and Outdoors partnered with SWAC to host some holiday curbside surprises within our communities. Uh, all 10 member institutions nominated families where we leveraged our safe buy online pickup curbside option 
uh, to provide families with items that help them make their holiday season a little brighter together. Uh, it was a rewarding and a meaningful way to connect with the community as we kicked off the relationships. And we hope to build on that in years to come so we can help create new memories um, by having fun together through sports and outdoors activities. When you're looking at building partnerships and those relationships, obviously things need to align. And so when you look at you know, the motto or slogan for the Southwestern Athletic Conference, it's building champions for life. And so how does Academy Sports and Outdoors kind of align with that? Our vision is to be the, the best sports and outdoors retailer in the country uh, with the mission to provide fun for all through assortments, value, and experience. Uh, we want our customers to have the best experience when they shop us in-store or online. And we know that SWAC is committed to providing their students and student athletes with the best experience they, as they go on to graduate and um, build those successful lives. And then just on a personal note, can you think back to a SWAT game that you witnessed live or an HBCU game that, you know, you went to that stands out um, to you as one of those great kind of moments? You know, it was Labor Day Classic. So I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. So Prairie View versus TSU is, is the staple. So I think going to the game as a kid, you know, not only is there a product on the football field, but you anticipate the halftime show. Uh, you think about just the band, the major reds, um, the Greek life that comes with it. Uh, having gone to that game, experiencing the HBCU life, um, and then even, you know, coming from a neighborhood where I grew up, we sort of built our staple around TSU, where we were sort of the mini TSU in terms of um, how we approached our band life. So. It was great to be entrenched into that culture at an early age. And um, it's something that stuck with me for, for all of my life. All right, Chris, I appreciate it. And where can folks go to find out more about uh, Academy Sports and Outdoors? For more information about Academy, you can visit us online at academy.com uh, or any of our social media pages, pages, including Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. All right, Chris Woods, the Regional Marketing Manager for Academy Sports and Outdoors. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time and uh, good job of signing up with the SWAC. They're, 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 they're hot right now. They, they, they're the best things going right now. So thank you so much. We're excited about this season and many more to come. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in-store pickup. It's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in-store. Get in, get out, get back to having fun with your family. SWAC fans, here's our SWAC football predicted order of finish presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. All right, this is going to sound cheesy. If you don't know, now you know. You've heard from all of the teams, the coaches, the players, about what their expectations are for this season. We have delved into their insights. And so, Jay, I'm curious to know some of your thoughts and your takeaways from day two. Yeah, very interesting. You know, a lot of interesting storylines there. We were heavy in the West part of the conference today. Uh, but start off with Mississippi Valley State. When you talk to Vince Dancy, we saw them in person last year. That fight is still there. He's not gonna let his team not fight. And you can see that the Delta Devils are not going anywhere. They're gonna continue to be a tough out for anybody. But when I look at Prairie View A&M, that was the, the shocker to me. There's a shift. Seeing Eric Dooley become a defensive minded coach. We know the offense he puts on the field can always score. But the big question is he's gonna have to rely more on that defense to stop giving up so many points, to stop making a shootout. And I think he finally recognized it. Southern University, that quiet confidence of Dawson Odom. He, he knows he has a good football team. He, he doesn't care about what they're saying about Deion Sanders and Alcorn State. He knows he's got a good football team. And you can feel that confidence when you talk to him. And, you know, Texas Southern coming off a, a team, a season where they didn't win a game, the fight's still there. The hope is still there. The new coach, the second year coach, Clarence McKinney, still feels like he took the right job. And I think that's all you can ask for when you're going off the season they had last year in your second year, still feeling like positive things are gonna go. I'm in the right spot and I'm gonna be able to turn around. But I think the most interesting takeaway was the, the last one we talked to, we talked to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Out of all the schools we talked to, they've got a clear mission. Like they got a clear mission. Six and five is not good enough. 
They got those three signature games that they want to try and win, be one of the big boys. And I think when you're so clear-minded like that, if they can find a, a trigger man that can step up and play ball, and they got some guys in the trenches, they, they could do some things this upcoming football season too. And just before, you know, we go to your gimme five, I, I want to touch on this predicted order of finish, right? And just how the coaches and how do people feel about these teams and what's expected uh, for both sides. When you look at the SWAC West, well, you've got kind of exactly the way it finished in 2019 with Southern atop uh, along with Grambling, then Prairie View A&M, uh, Texas, excuse me, UAPB, and then Texas Southern. And then on the East, which is, going to be a little bit interesting because it's the last year for Alcorn State to be competing on that side before they move over to the West. It's Alcorn, uh, then Alabama A&M, Alabama State, Jackson State, and Mississippi Valley State. In your mind, uh, do they have it right? I mean, who are the favorites for you? I mean, you know, I hate to sound boring, but, you know, like they say, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And uh, Alcorn and Southern have established year in and year out, that they're the two premier teams in their side of conference. So until somebody knocks off that Brave team, which hasn't been done in six years, and until somebody knocks off Southern, which hasn't been done in a while, then I'm going to say they got it right. Prove me wrong. But prove the rest of the conference wrong. Those are two fantastic football teams. They're going to be chasing both the Jaguars and the Braves. So, Jay, I need, I need like, mm, 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 mm. Ooh, mm, 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 mm. I'm coming up with it in my head. You know, I'm just creating this on off the cuff, you know, theme music for you right now for your Gimme Five, because as you told me, you staying in your lane. So we're going to talk about the top five quarterbacks all time coming out of the swag. Hit me. Number five is a guy by the name of Parnell Dickinson. Played at Mississippi Valley State, got drafted to the NFL. Injury cut his career short, but he was a four-year starter at Mississippi Valley State. He was that guy before you heard of another guy on the list who's at number four, Willie Totten, Willie Satellite Totten. I still always say, every time I say Willie Totten, I gotta say Satellite Totten, the greatest nickname possibly ever for a quarterback in this conference. Satellite Totten, he's number four. He was a trigger man for Jerry Rice, for Archie Cooley's offense. He really got it done. Number three, in young folks, I know, he, it's an argument he could be the greatest quarterback ever in college football, but I got him at number three, and that's his heirs, Steve Air McNair, the late, great Steve Air McNair. Uh, number three on this list, you return to smack legend. Not saying what he did in college football gets underestimated, but I got him number three, because number two is a name that most people probably thought was number one. And I'm going with Doug Williams as number two. First black quarterback to win a Super Bowl, Drafted to the first round to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the legend of Doug Williams goes on and on and on. But he's number two because number one, you got to give it up to the godfather of the black quarterbacks. Also, you know, mentor to Doug Williams, and that was James Shaq Harris. If you don't know, do your research. I'm always going to pay homage to the guy that got it all started for black quarterbacks in the NFL and one of those swack legends. On I went new school, a couple more modern SWAC legends. Bruce Eugene becomes the third Grambling quarterback on this list. And Bruce Eugene, I mean, probably one of the most prolific passers in the, since the 2000s that we've seen in the conference. And also joining him on the bubble, rest in peace. Let's give a shout out to the late, great Tavares Jackson of Alabama State. Sorry to see him go so soon. That's my list. You can do it if you want to. If you want to try, you can hit us up at Black College Live. Uh, Jays, remember that, Tiffany. Jays, give me five. I roll. Where's my emoji for the eye roll? That's what this <laughs> eye roll, eye roll, eye roll, eye roll, eye roll. I think that would be really appropriate right about now. But you know what? I like that list because I was like, okay, he's got a couple of tigers at the top of the list, Delta Devils at the bottom of the list, sandwiched in between there, you know, Aaron McNair. And, and I think it's interesting because, you know, we have talked at length on broadcast just about you know, the contributions that, you know, Steve Air McNair made uh, to college football and the success at the pro level. So I was surprised to see him coming in at number three and the fact that you put the guy who got it started for all black quarterbacks and James Shaq Harris at number one. 
You know what else I like about it? When you talk about the SWAC, and this is why I say, like, it's a legend conference. They're a conference of legends because when you handle your business on the field throughout the 100 years, they've been playing football for 100 years in this conference, I can just give you one word and you know who I'm talking about. When I say Shaq, when I say Air, when I say Satellite, when I say Parnell, when I say Doug, <laughs> when you say Bruce, when you say Tavares, you know you've made your mark when you can go by one word. And so that's why some people call me Sky. I'm what about sweetness? <laughs> sweetness. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> the list goes on and on. But to have this many one word quarterbacks that you can describe lets you know the history and the pageantry, which is college football down in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, well, that has uh, been great because you know what? You do a great job, and, and I think the conference does a great job at paying homage to those legends, right? Those who have laid the groundwork before to get the conference to where it is now, tops in FCS in terms of attendance, uh, putting out a terrific uh, product out on the field week in and week out. And you know what? We will be privy to that. We will be in the booth, and we'll get a chance to see that this season, and I'm so excited about it to be joining you once again this season. Looking forward to it. And that wraps up the Cricket Wireless SWAC Football Virtual Media Days. For Jay Walker, I'm Tiffany Green saying so long, and we'll see you hopefully on Saturday. The Southwestern Athletic Conference would like to send a special thank you to our corporate sponsors, Cricket Wireless, the United States Air Force, USAA and Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey fans, make sure to follow us on social media at The SWAC on Twitter and Instagram and the Southwestern Athletic Conference on Facebook.